Hello everybody, my name is... Should I point at the camera or point at you? If you want, you can put at the camera. So hi there, I'm Lukas Wilczko. Um, I do run a mixing and mastering facility here in Vienna, um, in my LW Sonic Studios, which is a part of the Vienna City Sound Studios. And I do mostly mixing and mastering and also production for alternative rock and heavy music. And yeah, that's, that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. You're the music guy. I'm the music guy. Exactly. You're the yes. music guy, right? <laughs> How long have you been doing this already? Like professionally since 2009 and also before that on my own time. On your own yeah, time. Yeah, so you got into it uh, uh, just hobby or something like that. Interest. Uh, Childhood. Yes. I you started, were traumatized. Yes, I was traumatized by music and by playing in bands in, uh, since I was 14. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Punk. Yes, like rock band. More, more metal than punk always. All right. Still more, more metal that back then. And so music was always very interesting to me. My brother was a very good, he still is a very good guitar player, but he played in bands back then. Mm -hmm. And I was like always admiring him. And he's seven years older than me, so that's like what I wanted to do. And sometimes when I went to shows or when I was allowed to go to his shows, I also kind of saw that there's a person in the back doing sound and kind of orchestrating everything and, and what kind of the audience gets from the band. So, and since it was my brother's band, I could like always go everywhere I wanted and look at it. And so this became very interesting to me, like this all this, this, this mixing console side of things. And later on, then I went to school, I did the Matura, then I studied in Linz something, and then I went to SAE in Vienna. Institute, right? The, uh, can I, the, the School of Audio Engineering Institute, mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there I finished like with the regular engineer and the bachelor. Mm -hmm. degree and in 2008 and since 2009 I'm like working this uh, professionally I mm -hmm. got my my like license to do this professionally like the I'm the Gewerbeschein in Austria <laughs> independent <laughs> yeah exactly uh, yeah, to, to be self-employed exactly that's it yeah the permission to be self-employed yeah and yeah and, and so I started doing live sound for a corporation I did lots of uh, corporate work back then Mm -hmm. And back one in the old days, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like 2009. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a I very had long to do time a lot of corporate. <laughs> <to, laughs> you know, I did say to, 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 for to, the to, record. To, to, I did not say. Okay, <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 it's, it's me. It's my job <laughs> no. to to no. Yeah. He didn't say. It's, no, it's I, how I no, express I say, stuff. I do say, but I don't say corporate. So it was no, no, still no. it was very good work because this this work had the advantage of being during the week and of being paid like normal mm -hmm. and you also like had to work with good equipment like from the get-go mm -hmm. this is what's a big advantage and live sound is still very kind of challenging because it has to happen now there is no time for it so you're all the decisions that can mm -hmm. take time in the studio they have to work now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also in in corporate stuff you only have like one microphone sometimes mm -hmm. but it can be very challenging because people that talk on these stages they sometimes don't know how to hold the microphone mm -hmm. but you still gotta make it work i know i Without remember any my feedback experience and stuff, yeah with the microphone yes exactly yes. exactly and so like if people don't if the audience doesn't hear it anything they look at you you, you yeah, yeah of course you you what did you do with the music yeah, exactly. with the song? Yeah. so this is uh, was very good education for a long time but in 2010 i started at the studio in the 14th district mm -hmm. and in 2014 i took over the studio in the 14th district and then years later, I remodeled the whole place, the which was going year, again. Yeah, uh, when the uh, Halloween party was, where you were at. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some time ago. Yeah, like there was like this years. pandemic thing and 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 dates it was and everything. before the pandemic. Yes, right, exactly, yeah, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And this was a very large place, mm. to be honest. And I did lots of recordings there, and other people also did lots of recordings there, which was nice. But uh, things went down in size of what I actually needed that I thought about moving and going to a much, much more efficient place. Mm -hmm. Because even at the big studio it was like an open concept studio where like the, the, um, the control room and the big recording room was one room, which had the advantages, uh, sorry, advantages, advantages of uh, being able to communicate more direct without any headphones because I tend to not like headphones when mm -hmm. working like uh, the, the least amount I have to use <laughs> and um, so this was great and but since I only as a, not only but the, the biggest 
part of my job was mixing and mastering and I didn't need this big space. So I looked around to find a smaller space mm -hmm. and this is what I found here at the at this studio. Are we? Yeah, yeah. we are in the first district. We're in the first district. In Fancy, the, can't you see? Yeah. <laughs> in not, the, not as the, it's like And a, the address uh, is yeah. also awesome because it's the Rockgasse. Yes, yes. Which yes. is awesome. <laughs> With an H in there, so yes. it's R O C K H, and exactly. And so now here inside the Vienna City Sound Studios, mm -hmm. these are four studios around mm -hmm. us. So yeah, three others, and mine is the fourth. And this is the place where I do stuff now. And the big advantage here is that I do all my stuff in here. Mm -hmm. And if I record with bands, I can use Studio One over there with the big recording room and the big control room and obviously all the nice equipment which is around here. So I found this place and actually it's, it's very nice to work in here because I can do it very, yeah, efficiently, to mm -hmm. be honest. Uh, and I had kind of also this, so I on my own, I don't need 130 square meters. How much of the live recording was there? You know, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. it was like a mixing and mastering was mm -hmm. more than live, right? Exactly, because um, lots of bands now have good systems um, to record ah, themselves. Technology evolution. Yes. That's and where especially thing. like like good microphones that that pick up good quality sound mm -hmm. with less noise and also like uh, converters, which uh, like these two right here, mm -hmm. which is the stuff that that puts your wave analog waveforms into zeros and ones and back again. Ah, DAC CAD uh, ADDA. <laughs> I know like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no idea. Um, <laughs> this stuff, like for good quality, also got w way cheaper. Which cheap doesn't mean bad, but like really. Yeah, but okay. Really for, for no, for, cheaper. For, yeah. for, for non -mu yeah. music people, and what is cheap? Like a thousand? 200, no, 200, 500 euros. Really? You can get some some stuff that if you can like from play your instrument properly and tune your yes, instrument yes, properly yes, yes, and yes. can sing yeah. good, yeah. then this is for the stuff that that for all those those alternative rock stuff and everything really this, this can be plenty if you have a good song that's all you need okay so you can get like the mics uh, cost around 300 I would it depends say. on what you want to do you want to record drums you rather go into a big studio because i did mm -hmm. uh, for some albums i just people just came in for drum recording then they did their bass and guitar and at keyboard or whatever at home yeah. and then they maybe came in again for singing Yes, maybe. Yeah. Because singing, it's not only the, the the situation with the equipment and all, but also like they're working with a producer thing. Mm. Yes, you need a second person yeah, to, to and because, see and, and very often also there's like, if you have a band, there's mostly, I think nearly every time there's one person in the band who takes care of this recording stuff, mm -hmm. this demo stuff. And so I also started with some bands um, having like a consultation thing consulting thing where, where I just say okay what equipment you got and let's work from there and see how you can record this properly and some tips on, on what they should uh, think about and, and, and take care about when they record stuff and this improves like from every song to song to song until you are at the level where people just send in files and they're and it's good to go so basically a producer that's a producer exactly thing. but this is then remote production because I can ah, physically be there okay so I do a lot of, of video streaming and stuff and zoom calls with people and and, right. and also so work this way I mean it's like online producing basically. exactly I call it on my homepage it says remote production but yeah but that, yeah yeah remote production is producer yeah yes, exactly yes. because yeah, sometimes exactly. people don't know I mean people who listen to, to this stuff probably own no, yeah, I right. think about uh, the, the, everything uh, I said. But now. for me, the, like <laughs> I should be like an outsider, and it's yeah. also for me. I also know the shit, right okay, yeah, yeah. stuff, right? Like, uh, yeah, you just need uh, files. I mean, like you don't need yeah, to, the, you don't need people things, here. I need uh, files in a certain format and and like clear file names, which is very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you can stuff. discuss it with your clients. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. They, they, you, get you send, uh, they get a list of yes, guidelines exactly. of what to do. Yeah. How to rec probably you also give them like tips how to record or it's already. This is very uh, different on every kind of project. Yes. But I tend to work very individually on every project with yeah. people. So because some people they, they did it for five albums already or they know their way around. Yeah. And other people who are starting out, it's it's of they have like a big learning curve also in, in engaging with the producer and stuff because they make mistakes one time and never again. So if they always do it on their own, they kind of never learn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So you can gr groom somebody like into like a, like you start yeah, with somebody small yeah. and they become... Uh, yeah, and fun thing is that 
there are some clients even who now record other bands on their own on their setups in their region and then just send stuff over for mastering yeah so that's also cool you just plant the seeds and then they come back <laughs> yeah it's about sharing <laughs> it's about it's sharing, about sharing. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> okay so yeah. Okay, cool. What was the last project? You told me that you recently did the live recording with uh, yes. the, the, the band The Enderung? Or, or yes, or because I'm pretty fresh at this place now. Uh, I had uh, my first recording session here with the Viennese band, which is called The Enderung. Yeah. And goes into this uh, like stoner, Black Sabbath kind of genre thing, like rock. In what language? Uh, English. Interesting. English, yeah. And a very nice... Uh, vocals in there like mm. a rock band which is fine a good band and like very extravagant kind of mm -hmm. kind of a dramatic vocal style which so is they just approached you did you know them before no actually i approached them Ooh. yeah because I that's a big thing no i i i, I you you like saw them okay you sound cool let me be with you you it, have yeah. potential no like the first thing is like you need anything <laughs> i think you guys are cool you need anything that's basically what do you do it often when you like yes I, Yes. 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 If I want to work with somebody, I think this is cool. Then, then it's just asking. It's just yeah. Hey, you guys need anything. You guys want to do something. Maybe they they don't even know yeah. that they need it. You know, like like some kind. Yeah, I think bands kind of have their. <laughs> if they would like to release true, something, yeah. Okay. Okay. but yeah, yeah, nah, yeah sure. Um, because if you just if I just go somewhere and see a band live, which happens quite a lot, and I think a band is cool, and I talk to them after, then I don't. I think if, if at the merch table there's an album which is like one month old, then I'm guess okay they're not gonna need something that soon. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can always ask mm -hmm. because you, you don't know how this album was made. At that point, I don't know how this album sounds, and if they like it how it sounds, which also happens, bands sometimes don't have the best experience in a studio. This happens unfortunately, but still, it happens all the time yeah. actually. I think yeah. <laughs> from what I heard from from from. Uh, in not interviews, but doing research for my interviews with okay. other bands, yeah, with, with, yeah. with successful bands, yeah. non successful, it doesn't matter what yeah. uh, stage of it. No, and this is also best. like if you go into a deeper conversation with bands, this is like an important thing to ask. Mm -hmm. So, so what's important for you guys at the studio because maybe they want something that I can't. Okay, I can record at a bar, and that's it's the thing. I just think about things, things that I can't do, but if it is a bad fit from the beginning, then you can just forget about it anyway but sometimes if you just talk to them they say yeah we actually we would need something actually we have something laying around that we would like to have mixed or what you don't know until you ask mm -hmm. and so with the end i i just uh, wrote them on instagram i think yeah well that's, and that's, it was like hey cool profile <laughs> you sound cool you <laughs> look you cool to? you want to do something yeah, like exactly. i'm here if you need me right yeah, yeah. like like let's talk if you want yeah and they responded they luckily responded yes and now there's an EP coming. So EP coming soon? Soon-ish. You know what's funny, you know, like like you're the, the sound guy, right? Mm. Usually when I'm like talking to musicians, they're like a front end, let's say like this, right? Mm -hmm. like, so uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm, when I talk to musicians, like, okay, where the new stuff is coming out? I was like, mm. I'm like okay, we recorded it, it's in mixing, mastering, and we will see it in like in half a year, right? No, <laughs> the end long stuff mixing session is uh, on this uh, Thursday. So no, 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 no. <laughs> but what I mean is like like uh, usually mixing mastering goes yeah. as normal, yeah. right? But then for them to release it, yeah, label, because the labels keep it in. labels, yeah. promotion, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So everybody is like super sad when like yeah, we just recorded it. I wish we mm. can like, but it's like mm. eh, it's, no. It's I, I tend to have my stuff done because I plan all the projects and also the deadlines and everything because. Sometimes you get label deadlines. Yes. So yeah, yes. Uh, but other times, like the, the album is done, and especially during the, the pandemic, like albums were lying around for two years mm -hmm. at labels because they couldn't yeah. bands couldn't go out to promote, so there was no reason in in, in, in releasing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's, it's it's actually like unfortunately really sad. Yeah. But, well, if you get signed to a label and you're not independent, like you can be in like independent way. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, Whatever. That's yeah. That's a different story. Exactly. But so I, I'm very lucky to be not at this end of. So mm. this is like really not work for me. Have I, you ever tried uh, doing uh, the stuff that's connected to music? Right, being a manager. Uh, starting independent label, were you thinking about it? Like to be honest, I do have an independent label that nobody knows about because I tend to prom to not promote it. Mm. And it's called Echo Tunes. <laughs> and it's out there and stuff is released out there. But it's more because of my own, it started with my own bands. Mm. 
and which are which are at the moment it's young nates and like before it was the chaos circle and some and many many, many mm -hmm. others in in the past exactly mm -hmm. and so like for this reason i thought okay i have a studio i do have the license to have a label so just have it and i can Would you say li license you mean like musical license or is it like a like a yeah, normal like a, or it's like a and like one no or, i'm no, i mean like a yeah. Is it like a music license that you are always? Yeah. No, in, in Austria, it's, it's like in my, which is very individually, but in my um, workers' permit as a self employed person yes. or a company, I am allowed to uh, um, record and, and, and I don't know, because it's all these proper German things, which is, is it's not mastering, it's not mixing, it's like the German yes. terms. Um, so to promote and to uh, replicate it and to put it out there. Uh -huh. So I'm allowed to do it. So this means so I you can, can run a label. So so you can upload to Spotify directly. No, I use a distribution company because Spotify won't have that. Uh huh. I okay. can do it because I would need my own contract between my label and between Spotify. And this, That's what this, I mean. As much as I do know, because I never cared about it, this much um, I uh, don't have this contract directly. But I use an Austrian company to distribute it because. I, this is just my personal opinion, but I think as soon as you have like uh, American distribution companies, which are very common out there, I uh, don't want to name any names now, but the thing is that you have to keep in mind when if anything happens, and I had it happen with one client once, you are, uh, things are taken care of uh, with the American uh, legal rights system. and legal, 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 system, legal yes. system, exactly. Yes. And this can be very, very exhausting, especially if they kind of prohibit you the release or if you um, want to release something and then they say hey your band name exists five times we have an issue and then you email something and mm -hmm. it's like half a year nothing happens but you are instructed not to release anywhere else in this half year mm -hmm. so uh, and you just can't do anything I and mean, this was a small independent band so yeah that's that's it because i wasn't this was the decision of the band without anything of me knowing about it and and their decision but it's just like what what i experience during with um, because of them and so yeah and and i just tend to do it with an austrian company and i just put stuff out there which is then on, on every platform and stuff. so far no problems right so far no problems with all knock, no knock, knock, knock. and i have like very easy deals like no i mean and, it's, and it's cool it's, well, yeah. if you know people especially yeah. like in the yeah. company and stuff and yeah. it's a uh, local but yeah i heard like many horrible stories when Mm, stuff disappear from Spotify, from famous artists, yeah. so you know. Yeah, it disappears all the time. All the time, yeah. if they see that you have some fake streams or something like this. Actually, Not only this, but, sorry, but, but the thing is yeah. like, um, this musical catalog rights mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and, and those catalogs are um, speculative things, like investment things right now, and they, they travel between companies. Backlogs. Uh, Backlogs, exactly, like if, I think, D. Snyder from Twisted Sister or Bob Dylan, they sold all their catalogs because financial benefit, so like... They, it's an investment. Yeah, yeah, and they have to pay different kind of taxes if they sell the catalog or if mm. they earn the next year. There's uh -huh. like it's a... cheaper for yeah, them. Yeah, like there's some very good D. Snyder interviews online where he explains it's very in very good detail on why he did it and it makes sense for him, of course. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like if those catalogs um, get sold, the right owners change. Mm -hmm. And every time this happens, there's a different right owner to Spotify. So if they are in a playlist, there is some time when the song is not in the playlist anymore because it's from a different mm -hmm. right owner now. Mm -hmm. And I think Spotify takes care of this stuff fast. If it's but a big label, this probably. is still stuff for like more genre specific things. Like, OK, you got this album from this one cool indie band somewhere and then somebody else has the right or the label gets bought by a different label and it's gone. And mm -hmm. it's also gone from the playlist mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate for the bands because people tend to only have one song of a band at a playlist and if this one gets sold then it has to be added to the playlist again yeah 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 that's that's uh, i recently like i will put a, a photo of the youtube video mm -hmm. there was a guy who had a lot of um, like albums like 17 albums or like a lot of stuff mm -hmm. years right mm -hmm. they removed all his catalog completely all his music and he with uh, help of friends, social media, uproar, and he's a good, has a good uh, YouTube channel. Brought it back, but as he said, there was a dip in algorithm that because everything went away mm -hmm. from all the playlists, from mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. To come back to the thing it takes will take time. Yeah, and 
monetarily it's direct hit because yeah deep uh, in this uh, algorithm which means that income will go down from all the streams you right mm. so i mean he, he was super pissed it's horrible story yeah, but, of course. It, but it happens all the time yeah, yeah that's what i yeah. Uh, yeah. so what do you think about uh, not spotify but streaming digit streaming streaming stuff right i would say like this you know it's it's a difficult subject yeah. because everybody has access mm. to the music mm -hmm. And not only music, anything, but let's say music, right? But at some point, it can disappear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes artists can change the music. Like yes. Uh, like, for example, I remember early when the title appeared, somebody changed the song to a different kind of song, uh, an artist, you know? Okay. And everybody were pissed, was like, come on, man. It's like, it's like Star Wars remastered, you know, like we're adding uh, yeah. uh, effects. There are lots of albums where you only find the remastered versions. Yes. Which I personally because yeah because of the job that i do i kind of get familiar with the certain yeah. sound of albums when i was a kid and now there's no noise floor anymore there's yeah. no <laughs> yes yes like which for is example, like if you're used to it for example nice. i ask you like like a yeah. uh, favorite stuff right like what you like and you mentioned yeah, yeah, iron yeah. maiden right like yes. uh, somewhere in time big time and uh because i listen on tidal right mm, there's only uh, the remaster I there's guess. only a remaster yeah. i wanted to listen to the original because yeah. of course you know the original and yeah. i wanted to listen to the original there's yeah. only remaster yeah you know. but i think that <laughs> this is a very special because a case because um back then I, I don't think that this version is is that much off to be honest so you still get it and um but you see you know but i don't know what yeah, was the yeah, original sure. but I, I see the reason why you get pissed because you expect some original stuff of an old band of an nearly 40 year old album right now that's on the, you do, maybe you just want to have it in the original but they only had to have the license for the remastered one or maybe yeah. the bands just don't want it to be out there anymore in the also old way, yeah maybe. which is kind of the best way because then you think okay this is i always want like the artist to sh look this is the thing and you listen to this now and this is what we've done and if they decide that this is it now then yeah that's that's kind of okay for me but to start with the, with the beginning of your question was what i think about streaming for me as a consumer like only consumer side i love it yeah of course because i started like when i was a teenager skateboarding mm -hmm. and so you had like because the battery went down in the Oh, yes, yes, yes. Then you kind of did an ollie or anything, so your CD player stopped. <laughs> then you had mini disc. Yeah, and it was like a yeah. really short period of time. Exactly, the... and I, then I had like one of the very first MP3 players, yeah. which was like very expensive, and yes. like if and you it was like a block average now, it, what, what it means in euros, it was like 250 euros for a 17 How many kit. shillings? Do you remember? Yeah. Now, okay, uh, what's 1,750 shillings was the player. And the player had an internal storage of 16 megabyte. And the, had a slot for some card, as an SD card. It was, I'm sure it was called different back then. This not an yeah. SD, but some other card. Um, which once again cost... No, the player was 1,500 and the card was 1,750 was the card. But then you were like shock proof for yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is that this meant together, it meant about... yeah. 30 something minutes of music as an mp3 yeah and yeah. so i had lots of songs because i listened to a lot of punk rock and no effects and stuff so it had mm. a lot of sh short songs but yeah. it was not longer but this was your playlist mm -hmm. and this is there comes the other thing if it's on a medium on a physical medium okay like storage thing or just you're limited you tend to learn the songs more mm -hmm. because you don't have the choice mm -hmm. and there's like both sides of the story because as a consumer I love it because someone hey there's this cool band out there and, okay yeah awesome it's like it's a second and I got it and I got everything on, on YouTube obviously and, and or any other streaming service you you want to use if you pay for it or not you can still you have access to it and this is a very cool thing you have access yes and, and there comes the other thing in the early day or like when I started listening to, to music and everything and, and, and falling in love with it and I bought the CD and maybe I heard some snippets of the song in the store before and then I had to wait to get home and just throw my jacket away and everything in my bag and just put it in and what's, what's this, what's this? Yeah, <laughs> remember, yeah. And so this kind of joy yeah. doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. But yeah, okay. 
I mean, you can artificially limit yeah. yourself, you yeah. know, like I don't listen to yeah, it. Yeah, we are kind of also the lucky, the, the, the very lucky generation true, true, who yes, had yeah. it all. So we had no phones, we have smartphones, phones, we yeah. had still, when I was a kid, my father had to put on a vinyl record for me to yeah. jump around as a small kid. Yeah, yeah. And now we have this all streaming stuff. So yeah. no generation than us will ever experience both of it. Probably not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome, and, yeah. and uh, joy and also disappointment, you know. When yeah, you sure! Were, uh, oh, what the f What? Oh, sorry. What uh, is this? Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember, <laughs> I remember when I had this experience when I put Radiohead in Rainbow, so the album. Yeah. And then it sounds, because it was a drastic, uh, like, like a change, and I remember just like, what the f*** is this piece of shit? <laughs> I'm gonna blip it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I hate exactly. it. And then after a while, I got into it, and of course, I enjoy. It. And that was also mm. a thing. You, you, you stick with it. Yeah, because you, you bought it. it. Yeah, you bought you it. You spent listen some to it. serious money on this stuff. So yeah. you listen to it, and you got into it, and then yeah. of course, you like yeah. it, and whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But I do also see with with nearly every band I work with that a physical copy is uh, still valuable. Yeah. And definitely. still good, good to make, and good to have. For, for a band, uh, of obviously as a financial thing, for, as, a, as a merch item and to, to sell to people, but also like to, for people to have like, if they were bought it on a show, uh, they have something they relate to, they remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also a very good space for, for marketing for bands. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, need, you need to sell something, yeah. right? Like, because... Uh, yeah, and if you get like, this really, this is still, sorry, a, a valuable point for artworks, art yes, design, yes, yes. It's, it's still, not off the charts yeah. because people still need it, even though for the streaming you need the artwork. But you can have a different artwork with the vinyl or something. You can have this whole journey packaging thing. And the thing is, like, uh, streaming doesn't bring you money. I mean, it brings money to some to some extent, right? Like to to the artist, right? Yes. But it's mainly no, actually uh, it brings lots of money, <laughs> but not the, the, not to the artist. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Well, that's another thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Like how how it's calculated. It's the distribution of the whole money thing, which is distribution. Yeah. Who gets the money? But exactly. be, be, there is money, but it doesn't go directly to the artist. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, deducted it's and all actually stuff. very yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So what I say, like, there's no money for the artist unless you know, mm -hmm. you know how it works. Uh, not always, right? So you need to sell something, right? Mm. So, so what can you sell? The merch, uh, and all kinds of merch, meet and greets, and all that stuff. You know, exactly. the, the the interacting, life. interactive things with interactive fans is stuff. very important now. And you see, like all the bands, because why are right now all the bands touring that much? Like bands that you thought you would never oh, yeah. see again, because yeah. that's the way they make money. That's the only way to make and money. And they all have their meet and greets yes. and their fan packages and yes. their special. I think you can. I don't know for how much, but you can attend the KISS sound check if you yes, want. Yes, yes, and yes. people are even allowed, because if KISS would allow people to visit an, a sound check, you wouldn't think about, like, it's, it's all on YouTube. Like, people are allowed to film it and to yeah. put it on, like, to have, like, KISS without the makeup and without the costume. So if the band wouldn't allow this, this would not be on YouTube in any kind of form, or in a way I, which I just imagine. So, has to be like this. It seems like that because it's so much up there. But bands kind of want to involve the audience in every kind of way. And then mm -hmm. they got their private TikTok channels and, and everything yeah, just yeah. to include the fans way, way more. And this is a very good form of, of communication, which was obviously in the older days, like uh, the, the, the labels had their hand on, on every outlet and, and just managed it all. Mm -hmm. And now bands and artists or also managers of artists, I guess, uh, can take control of it by, by themselves way easier. Mm -hmm. and do, you, do you do anything like that also? like Or you do master mix, mixing? Master no, I, I do like... Uh, do you have OnlyFans? No. <laughs> no. To be honest, not. <laughs> no. Um, not OnlyFans is not only for uh, uh, for sexual stuff, you know. like uh, The platform itself positioned themselves as the... Uh, ah, sure. Con content delivery platform, but it just became. Yeah, that's known what for many the... companies. Patreon, kind of Patreon, do. and OnlyFans is the same thing. Basically. I guess so. It's, it's yeah. I, I know the Patreon model, but if you now tell me that the other one is the same, then yeah. it's the same model. Yeah. It's like it's a paid yeah, wall, and for... it's also like the same kind. You just subscribe to one or to as many channels as, or as, as you want, and profiles as you want, and get this stuff there. But no, what I do is like I'm present on social media. Mm -hmm. That's. That's like very important to me, uh, for me and for my business. And I think like for bands that I work with and do, Facebook is not that valuable anymore 
Instagram is very valuable and TikTok is also very good, but not for the kind of music that I do. Mm -hmm. Because there is no, I, I am on TikTok, TikTok, all LW Sonics accounts all there, all over there. And, um, but there is, for now, there was no band on TikTok that I did not find on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So there was no exclusive kind of stuff over mm -hmm. there. And if I then approach people, I tend to do it via Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Instagram is the new Facebook. Uh, uh, TikTok is the new Instagram. Instagram is the new Facebook. Yeah. 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 You I can put it like this. I, and I also see like solar artists are, are way better on, on TikTok. Yes, yes. And yes. and uh, like bands, it's it's kind of always Instagram. Instagram. Or if you like look at different accounts from bands, like the one that's most taken care of yeah. is the Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. Do you consider also like uh, when you see the band that you want to approach also their social media presence? Like, yes, of like course. how how serious they are. No, because uh, what 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 the, the the best record in the world gets you nowhere if you don't sell it. Yeah. If you don't put it out there, you don't have to be like very. Like uh, how do you say it? That, um, like maybe you found wrong like about the selling part, but you have to put it out there. You have to promote it. Yeah. That that's very important because. This obviously is also promotion for me yeah, later yeah. on. If yeah. I deliver a good product and the band is happy, then that's the best thing that can happen. What do you look for in, in, in music that you want to, in musicians that you want to approach? Like uh, a, a, good li a good live band, good live. I, I, I tend to look... How uh, do you see them? Do they you release live videos from their rehearsal space. Is it enough for Yeah, you? that's like the, the, the most important thing because I know my way around making stuff sound good if the demo is not that or if it's not tight or editing stuff so mm -hmm. i i know that i can trust the production <laughs> uh -huh. yes. yeah i understand yeah, yeah because I, you I, can make it happen i yes. can make it happen myself yeah and, and i did <laughs> already <laughs> sometimes um no but uh playing life is very important to me like a good band energy energy and, music. and experience and i this is also like i do really adore bands like Iron Maiden or Sick of It All or Converge or like bands that are the same guys, uh, sorry, people, persons, those tend to be guys, but also we can talk about women in music because it's very important um, to have m way, way more women in this whole game. But for now, I, I mean, uh, when you play an instrument and you tend to play in bands, then you kind of look at people on stage and you see they're interacting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you kind of okay, this one plays a drum fill and you get the bass player like, hey, nice one. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, if you played some shows in your life, you kind of know the energy up there and you kind of relate to it. And then you see, okay, this is a pretty cool band and they got a great energy on stage. And then it always works. If they have a good thing going and if they're like polite to each other, whatever, if they're friends and you, you, you see this kind of thing, this is, these are the shows that I, as in, in the audience as a few, I enjoy the most, to be honest. Like really seeing it up there happening, like friends playing and uniting stuff to music, mm -hmm. which is Actually, <laughs> magic. I never thought yeah. about that. I mean, yeah. I, I feel it like, like a, like yeah. a non-professional. Yeah. You, know, you feel that there's yeah. something going on, exactly. which is magic. And this can also happen if the band is just around for three years. This, this can yeah, also of, happen. Of course, of, of course. Yeah. But this is like this, this interacting thing and this um, playing together and doing music and not playing the bass, you're playing the song, mm -hmm. which is like the, <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the, the big mm -hmm. sentence. Or you're not playing the instrument, you guys are playing the song. This is more important. And if this happens, that's like the way that I love recording. So I tend to have bands recording at the same time as much as possible. So like drums, bass, guitars, even vocals, if it's everything that, that, that helps them to, to get a great performance is always the most important thing. And then doing overdubs later on for stuff. This is like, if there's one guitar player in the band and you need two guitar parts, then one has to be overdubbed, obviously. So yeah, this is when I go into over uh, a dubbing process but as for what I look in bands is like I want to see any kind of rehearsal space recording it doesn't the, the quality is not that important I have to kind of hear if they're playing together if they're tight if they have fun and all of it and 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 that's also what what big bands are doing tool are going live when they rehearse I mean yeah that's awesome <laughs> uh, how much time do you need to under, to of the song to understand if you like it or not Oh, this can just be one element. This can just be one very tight bar of music. Where, 
all right. <laughs> that right. Guy's the great. I remember. Yeah. I remember when I was making a playlist on Spotify. I was trying to make a Spotify playlist of the music that I like, right? Mm. But the band that I don't know, mm. and uh, one song per artist, right? So I had to listen. Mm -hmm. If I find the song from the album, mm. I put it in, go next. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I really fast understood, okay, from the first five seconds, I see that, okay, it will, it yeah. will not go anywhere. It's a boring already. If you are yeah. in the same genre, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like that. yeah. You, it, 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 because I heard this story, like when, when labels or something, they say they can understand if it's going somewhere or it's working from the first couple of bars. Yes. And I was like, oh, come on. Come on, but actually, it is like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that, yeah. And you can like, yeah. and you can like jump to the middle of the song, and if it's not changing anything, mm -hmm. it's like I'm out next, mm -hmm. out. Ne it's mm -hmm. so horrible. Yes, <laughs> yes. But but unfortunately, it's like yeah. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't mean that it's right way, but if you're doing it. For example, for me, like I was doing making a playlist, like, yeah. a, like a radio DJ. It's like, yeah. no, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, no. But this is the, the point where I think that DJs become artists because artists tend to have this kind of decision making process. Mm -hmm. Okay, this fits, this does not fit, this fits, blah, blah. And this is also the thing where a DJ can get his credit, his or her credit, sorry. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, this is totally legitimate, to be honest, because this is then your playlist. So who decided to, that is cool, it's you. and, and so if I go to a club or somewhere where a DJ is putting on music, I want to hear the DJ's taste of music because that's what he gets money for. Mm -hmm. And if it's just like, hey, can you play this song? Or put it on a napkin and just let people decide what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. So do, you, do you go to, D I mean, uh, I guess uh, modern DJs are playlist yeah. uh, people, right? Yeah. But do you go to clubs these days for a DJ? Not more, not anymore. But I used to to go to Fear addicted to rock, and now there's this heavy club mm. stuff. I don't I don't want to never been there, but but I see this is around. Yeah, and I still think it's cool because it's kind of. Genre I've never of I've never I've never went to, to like out. like to to a place because I knew that the, the DJs or like whatever. Yeah, yeah I, like I kind of knew a few of them because those DJs mostly are also musicians, and you mm. kind of know them, so y you go there. But I, I did like. DJ myself, I think three times in my life, and this was where I was myself confronted with the, oh my God, what what I'm gonna play now, mm -hmm, yeah. and so this is very cool thing because you, you have like an, a piece of music and this is so awesome. Okay, you put it on and you enjoy like half of the song and then say, oh, what I'm gonna play next <laughs> because this is so awesome. What can top it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a completely it's different. Be, yeah, it's yeah. art form. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's an it's, a, it's an art form. But the other thing that I wanted to add to what you said before is because this is the stuff that I always experienced with physical copies of music, like with CDs, mm -hmm. because most of the time I bought an album because of one song, which was the single that I already knew. So you bought the album, and if you had the album, you listened to this one song. Yeah, and then it got boring, and you put out the CD and you put it in your yeah yeah. In the storage and everything, and you put in the next one, and years, years, years later, you have, oh yeah, that's the CD I once bought, and you put it in again, and you kind of recognize that all the other songs are also pretty cool, <laughs> and you get like your, the song you listen to is it's like the most boring one now, and you kind of explore the whole album after the like years after, and this I kind of forced myself to do this with streaming, mm -hmm. because it would never happen. Because, I, I, like you said, you put in the playlist and this is all from this band and this yeah. is all from this band and stuff. So you kind of don't get, the albums don't get the same chance anymore. <laughs> yeah, every, everything goes yeah. really fast. Yeah. Uh, and people it's, forget. It's, it's like I, I heard, uh, I think uh, Spotify or somebody else, doesn't matter. They said that we live in a, in a time when it's um, not uh, music or movies or entertainment, it's um, uh, attention. Yes. So everybody is yes. battling for attention. It can yeah. be because if you properly listen to music, you sit down and you listen to music on a good system at home and you enjoy the sound, the sonic space, yeah. right? This so is you, like it takes time from, from your life, right? Yes, very few people do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do that. Yeah, that, of course. <laughs> yes, I, I didn't expect anything else. That. Obviously, I, I do it too. And I, I, I do that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love listening to vinyl because... But in reality, not many people do that. Like, like, like just no. to sit down no. and like, listen to music. Yeah. And like, but way more fun is they tend to, as uh, soon as there's a point in life when you have your job and everything going and you have 
kind of some money for this hobby or whatever, yeah. you, you, you start to buy some nice hi-fi system, like one proper hi-fi system. Cool. Yeah. You that's put it you somewhere. Yeah, that's when you, you really start to appreciate the Go music. on Amazon, like acoustic panel, you buy a few. It's great. It's yeah. perfectly fine. But then the thing is, people still, the content that they play, if it's not vinyl or something, they tend to listen to like very low quality yeah. Spotify stuff Spotify or whatever, like, stuff, like yeah. the streaming stuff, which is also compared to music cassettes and stuff like this, it's way better. Yes. But it's still not like what the system could provide. Yeah. You're not feeding it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why I try to use uh, sys uh, services that provide at least CD quality. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's on a good yeah. system. Yeah, and so I do think I, that it won't take long till all of them are in this HD business. Actually, yeah. the title from April uh, starting to for already from the same yes. plan to do the HD vinyl quality yes. already yeah. for the same price. I think yeah. uh, Spotify is doing it also, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, but I... I mean, everybody is doing the same. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, I uh, compare all of them and, and the thing is that I personally now switched from Tidal to Apple Music because... Yes, they do HD it's music. Pretty, yes. pretty okay now. Apple Music tends to have a little tiny more bit of high end, which is just my personal yeah, that's thing. That's a personal thing. But yeah. it's like for, for what I need from the system, it's totally fine. and. The title catalog is not that big, yeah. It's Especially true. if you're in this indie alternative kind That's of thing. True. It, it's not like if I want to check out a band and I put it in title, it, it, it's just not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they also mismatch yeah. artists. There's yeah. like a mix but of but I had title like for three or four years, I, I think, which was because it was just the only one that, that sounded. Good. Yeah, that's what, that was that's the best the only reason with a big difference to all the others. That's that that's way. the only reason why I'm on Tidal's because yeah. it was maybe I'll switch to Apple. It doesn't matter. Not sponsor. Yeah, no, no. Shit. Like listening to music is great. Yeah, yeah. Period. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's 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 definitely to, it will stay. It will not go away. Uh, people appreciate uh, physical media more. Uh, if you get into it, not not many people actually. Like in reality, if you think about it, mm. but it's not always. It's it's not only the, the vinyl thing. I think that also CDs are still very valuable. CD anything that's uh, permanent in a way. Yeah, a way, and that's yours. That you can keep because if you think about this whole like um, the ebook situation. Oh yeah. So if there's a biography of a politician and he says that politician A says politician B is mm. a stupid person. And then politician B is the new president, then he can take care that the book disappears. Can happen because it's just a click and it's off your ebook reader. It's True. just gone. And with music, the same thing can happen if you just stream it. It just can be with movies, gone. with any, any, yeah. any, any digital. If it's not yours, media. it's it's gone in any kind of form. And, and with physical copies, like if your Wi-Fi breaks down and your internet provider messes up, then it's quiet. <laughs> yeah, I started slowly, like, uh, st uh, buying books more, like, especially. Yeah. They, like, that's... Yes, exactly. It's always there. Yeah. Because it already happened when I didn't have internet and... Yeah. And that's it. Or the train. Or... And that's it. Somewhere. That's <laughs> it. Life, that's it. Life stops yeah. when you don't yeah. have internet. And I do know that you can download them to your device. I do no know. battery. But, yeah. No, no battery. battery. No battery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> S switch to gasoline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um... You mentioned, uh, when I asked you what kind of uh, stuff that you like, you mentioned a book, right? Yes. Which is called, can you say it? Yes, it's called from Joachim Ernst Behrendt, and it's called Nada Brahma, Die Welt ist Klang, which basically means that everything is sound. Everything is sound. Yeah. I tried to s look through it mm. because I got it, right? Mm. Deep stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, can you like... You can't briefly explain because it's... Uh, it's no, it's, no, it's, but it's, the it's, book... It's, it's, it's. But yeah. you said like uh, that's a really important book for you. Why? Yes, because this book uh, came to me in, in a... was very beneficial to my further career and I got it in a very personal moment from a good friend, which was cool. And the thing is that because of this book, I kind of got into Hermann Hesse, mm -hmm. which I like very much. And... Um, it's also the thing like the, the beautiful thought of the universe and everything inside it being connected mm -hmm. via waves or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, so and this whole thing that, that we all kind of vibe the same way and like stuff is connected. So like as I yeah. said from the book, there are uh, world con uh, 
the, the book is waves. about all the theoretical parts of, of every religion which is now common in the world and, and what is like all the same in there and basically how what the purpose of music is and what the purpose of sound is and, and also a very important thing what the purpose of our ears are mm. because a lot of emotions we we um, get through our ears and they are the most powerful thing that we got because we can shut our eyes and we can see about I think Please correct me in the comments below, but I think it's like not that much. It's about 300 types of color we can actually see with our eyes. Yeah, the, the spectrum is yeah. not that big. Yeah. I mean, it's big, it's a, it's a lot, but uh, a shrimp, a uh, mantis shrimp, yeah. sees more than us. And we got like 20,000 frequencies we can hear. Mm -hmm. If we get older, it's less, yeah. But the thing is, your ears <laughs> are so awesome because tr imagine like sitting at a beach or somewhere there's little stones around somewhere at the street and you got a little stone and just when it's quiet you close your eye you take the stone and you just throw it behind you and just by hearing where the stone hits the floor you know where it's at you know how many meters and which direction you exactly know where it is and your eyes could never do this yeah i mean yeah okay you can see it okay but if it's behind you you can't yeah, because yeah. your ears are 360 and all around and and all the like like all the sound that we get like our when we grow in our mother's belly like three months three months after um mm -hmm. we start growing our ears are done mm -hmm. they never get more developed in that time mm -hmm. so we tend to listen to the sound of our mother mm -hmm. or even the sound of our father we, we we also get the emotions if the parents are fighting or if they are talking friendly and nicely to each other this is what what all already babies uh perceive and this is all through hearing and it's also if, if we die there are lots of, of surveys and studies about it that um no surveys obviously because you can ask the people but sorry <laughs> but uh, like this when you got these brain measurements attached that like the hearing is the last thing that stops which lives the longest from our senses and like music is a way of, of transporting emotions and this is how it works. We, we perceive it. And this book kind of combines all these uh, things or like these relations which uh, are in, in the universe. Again, the big mm. word. <laughs> but like if there is this instrument, of like the, a very ancient instrument, which is called the monochord. It's like one string on a piece of wood attached and it's tuned to a C. Or to, I think it's an A. And I think it's a C in this case. And if you strike it, then it makes a note. And this instrument, which like the most natural instrument you can imagine, provides overtones of this note. So it's not just a sine wave of the C, but there in the string there are overtones. And these are related to each other in some in a relationship. Like they're okay, this is the equivalent of this and whatever. And there are certain and very many relations in nature which correspond to this exactly. Uh -huh. Like uh um, this whole Fibonacci circle mm -hmm. thing and like how plants grow and 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 how one thing in relation to another yeah thing, and right? also like the relation like of the edges of diamonds mm -hmm. and all of this kind of stuff is in this kind of relation mm -hmm. or very very close to it mm -hmm. and also what happened is like if when people recognize okay there are planets and they are circling around the earth it was Kepler who found out okay they're not in circles they're elliptical and this velocities of the planets they have relations to it uh, to each other and these are exactly the same relations again mm -hmm. and this stuff and and this is like all in in this kind of book and it blew my mind when i read it and it's not that that i am not at all personally in this whole esoteric thing but it was just a nice book for me to to us that, that also got me into reading to be honest mm -hmm. because i never liked reading never mm -hmm. <laughs> and also in school i couldn't stand it you needed your yeah. your, your gateway drug yeah and then and also the thing has there's a lot of uh jazz musicians are mentioned in there and like coltrane and miles davis and and what actually their their big important um role was in in music and all and also the author himself berend was uh he called himself a jazz author but he was always also the, the guy and the founder and the curator the guy who ran the uh, the berlin jazz festival and he also established like jazz festivals in Japan in the 60s already. And he also established uh, blues festivals in, in England in the 60s. And even Mick Jagger once said in an interview that because of these festivals, the Stones kind of 
learned the music and because American musicians were brought in and stuff and, and, and so and also Beatles were inspired by these kind of events which they attended as, as young musicians and stuff and Berend was al already involved in, in these festivals and so and was yeah now if I mean, you, you can search him on YouTube and everywhere and he's like a cool guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what, I, what I found yeah. is that he went uh, uh, deeper into the idea of music and exactly. waves and stuff yes yeah uh, he was yeah he's a yeah. J jazz guy yeah, yeah i read that and uh, and he took you with him <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no but like the whole general idea of, of doing all of this and just which is like this this stuff all is just connecting creativity with physics mm -hmm. and this is my part in in this game so mm -hmm. i take creative ideas and i take sound ideas and I'm, I make them work on, on this little round thing right there. Mm -hmm. So I have to kind of connect these two, two worlds with, with each other. And this and, and to be honest, like yeah, I, I make stuff loud and people pay me for it. So it couldn't be any more awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you make sound loud, yeah. so this is like if I break it down, there, that, that's what I always wanted to do. Yeah. No, but but basically, uh, but uh, the, the the thing is like you said rega regarding this book. Yeah. So everything is connected. So you, in a way, like um, I mean, there's this kind of magic, kind of right. Like yeah. The, so you're like a magician in a way. Like no, a <laughs> not. But there's no, a kind no, of magic. No, but what I mean, yeah. what 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 I mean is like this is like the the music in this. Uh, it's not just like a music that sounds, but it's mm. uh, on a, on a deeper level. It's more like I don't know, like. A, universe kind of uh, yeah you, you can like, like um, um, exploring the universe uh, <laughs> in a way yeah. with, with music yeah, yeah that, that's also and the universe is it tends to be very loud and full of sound <laughs> all the time yeah. all around us and also like no but whales and 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 dolphins and everything they they communicate they orientate everything they navigate all through sound mm -hmm. yeah this happens all, all of thousands of kilometers. It's all by, by sound, and, and it's a, like a very important thing that we have to take care about and still have available for, for us in our do, lives. Do, do you listen at home at your super sound system? I have like whales, the whale, whale whale singing sound. for yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but for me the magic was when I was fourteen or fifteen years old and I came home from school and everything was kind of not that cool because you're a teenager and yeah. things tend to suck, and you just put on your favorite records and go like this and everything's fine and you're kind of okay again and yeah I'm, I'm gonna do it beep That's one true, day myself yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna be there <laughs> and and this is us like this all went over my ears yeah like the whole day changed or if you have a bad day and at the at night you go to attend the show and you see your favorite band or whatever and and, and it's gone it's all perfect now they're playing <laughs> Yeah, you're typ typical, yeah. like, like, no, no, not typical, but like you're the music guy. You're like, yeah. really, like, like, for me, it was more movies, you know? Like, All right, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is why but I'm like, making video here. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it was more movies. Movies were like, completely yeah. sucking me in and then yeah. the last stuff. But it, but I uh, totally understand what you mean. No, but, but the visual part is now not to get rid of anymore. Like, music is a visual uh, art form now. You can't release without the video. Uh, yeah. Okay. In the if we, if type we, of stuff that I work in, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. music is a a visual thing now. Yeah, yeah like yeah. that's why like we're the interview. Yeah, like like the interview. Here, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if I record just yeah. sound, which yes. is uh, uh, on higher level than we can get any video, right? For example, of course, yeah, uh, yeah. Like mm. for example, if we record just with good, yeah. like it's so much yeah. cheaper and easier to get a really good quality sound. The yeah, if you know what you're doing, but the yeah, same with you know video. What, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you compare video yes. to, to audio, yes. audio is way easier, yes. right? Yeah. And editing yeah. and everything. Yeah. When you add cameras, it's like completely it's different. Yeah, it's about, man, if you if you if you shoot some scene out on open street, then yeah. the kind of video part is easier because yeah. you have to get it quiet around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I know, but yeah, for you it was movies. Yeah, for me it was movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but. Let's not talk about me because I don't know no, what to talk about. Me. It's okay. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, like uh, you, dis uh, when you mentioned the teenage stuff, right? Like when are you, d when did you discover this album Iron Maiden thing? I can't really tell because it kind of was handed down from my brother, so it was always uh, there. Yeah. And I snuck into my brother's room and listened to his stuff when he was out. So, so why why yeah. why this album is so special for you? This album, this album in particular, came way more special later on. 
because at uh, at SAE at one time I wa I had to write uh, a producer comparison, and I really kind of got to know albums way more like the production side of things and everything. And so in the beginning, I thought, okay, what which producers I'm going to do? And then I thought, okay, Iron Maiden had two big producers, like was. Uh, Martin Birch and now it's uh, Kevin Shirley since I think the Brave New World album changed. Yeah, and the thing is, also from the sound, I obviously knew the sound and everything of it all. But there, there are so many special things about the album because there are guitar synths in there. There are synthesizers like this. Uh, I think it was those boss things um, that generate uh, keyboard sounds. And synthesizer mm -hmm. sounds attached to the guitars and everything, and or they were overed up. Now, when they play live, there's a keyboarder. It's actually Steve Harris's bass tech who plays keyboards live behind this and the curtain because they tend to play without click. So someone has to play it live. Yeah, and but like the whole rock and metal scene and this British wave of, of a Brit new wave of British heavy, me heavy metal, where they they started as a punk band with the Paul Diano singer, and then they went more into this kind of genre. And they hated the whole uh, synthesizer thing, and it was off, and it was you can't do it, and nobody will buy the album and anything. And it like nothing else sounds like this, and it's awesome. I really like it because of this, and in it, it it's all in this whole Blade Runner Star Wars theme from the artwork and also from the songs and everything, which is in there, which is like yeah. Star Wars is still out there, Blade Runner, <laughs> and the whole issue and the future thing and, and uh, AI right now. And it's, it's all like still a relevant piece of art <laughs> because of this. And also like the artwork of the first single where, where Eddie was kind of in this Blade Runner yeah. setting and everything, which was also cool to me. And of course, as a kid, the cover of the, the artwork of, of Derek Riggs is, is so awesome because there's so much little mm -hmm. things. There is, I think, uh, an endless uh, Wikipedia article yeah, about yeah. this album cover and all the like, references like the time says albums. it's uh, it's 2358 so it's two minutes to midnight yeah. and there's Icarus Fall it's a flight of Icarus and it's like so many things in there mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and this all together and also th obviously the songs and the music was like still one of the best albums for me personally that mm -hmm. I really like if a song comes up, I, I never forward it. <laughs> it's always awesome, and I still put it on in my car and stuff, and just listen it and enjoy it. To be honest, yeah, and yeah, and also like Iron Maiden was very important for me because there's I, I play bass and I always played bass and I never played guitar. I always am a bass player, and it always was Cliff Burton, Lemmy, and Steve Harris were the three bass players to me. Like the oh my god, this is what I want to do, <laughs> and with Iron Maiden. Steve Harris is also the, the band leader and the head of the company and everything. And because bass is always this kind of background instrument mm. that people think about because... That I was about yeah, to say, that's yeah. what people and think it's always about. Like in yeah. every kind of mixing session, if, if the, the band says, ah, I don't hear the bass guitar, then you mute the bass guitar and so, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you kind of heard it all the time. <laughs> Oh, no, it's this Meta yeah. Metallica, the... the, the yeah, the, it's, uh, it was, it's a different story. story. It's yeah, a yeah. Story. I still a cool album, to be honest. I like the album. I, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there's there's uh, on YouTube uh, mixes with bass in. Yeah. You can check them out. I think, I guess they're disturbing. It's, well, it's not the same, of course. Yeah. It's not it's the same. Yeah. It's like an edited version of, of some, it's like a Star yeah. Wars remaster. So oh, but yes, and Iron Maiden, I mean, even back there is a poster. So like the only posters mm -hmm. I got are Maiden posters. Do you still have the vinyl or you have All a new one? All of them. All right. of them. And some of them double because I tend to just buy them. And at home, I was, oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Now, I, I remember a few that I already have, but if I got a certain amount of it in a double. <laughs> Are they coming? Yeah. Any time? I don't think this year they're coming. No, I was to Wiener Neustadt last time. Yes. And yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Killing it as usual. Yeah, like for me personally, they got a different sound guy now. And I saw like seven or eight show shows with the older sound guy, and the new sound guy is mixing in a very modern way. Which well, is what is the modern way? Like, like it's very can... loud all the time. Element I even have it. I even have it in loud. my nose. Yeah. Loudness. <laughs> and to be honest, I totally get it, and I think it's very legitimate because if you want to talk about this, yes. Okay. That's um, the why. I, okay. Uh, why we're here? No, because I Stuff think, that you and want. this is the thing about bands I like so much, and especially Iron Maiden have now 
since 2000, so t more than 20 years now, they have three guitar players. They all play a Strat and they all play a Marshall. So you got three people playing the same guitar, same amp, and you tend to have kind of the same sound of everybody. Mm -hmm. So how do you distinguish it when you mix it? Okay, you put one on the left, put one on the right. Doesn't really work life because people on the left want to hear the guy. So there are certain things to do, like if you got your PA in the front and your outfields, you kind of, the outfields got the other side yes, mixed yes. to it. So I or heard about it. Or I you just, I think that last time in Stadtteil I saw Keith and I think he was mono, which was also fine. Mono is cool. Be, uh, I was kind because the, I was at the side, I went in the middle, I thought, okay, this is pretty. Yeah, but it's okay. But it sounds. Yeah, it you sounds can, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's totally fine for, for a live situation. But you got those three guitar players. And if you put them mono, like, ugh, what it you do? It just sounds. Yeah. It's just loud. But right? you have the big advantage of very now old guys, mm -hmm. but very experienced guys, mm -hmm. who kind of tend to mix themselves when they write the song. So I'm up in this range, you're down in that range, you play ah, the solo, I do this. So you got this, this very, very good musicianship happening. Mm -hmm. If because you know what you're doing. <laughs> and the musicians, it's not the sound yeah. guy, it's the musicians who yeah, know yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you got also a very prominent bass in a very mid-range way, mm -hmm. and that's the band leader, so you don't want to have him quiet. Mm -hmm. That's also in there. <laughs> so I get it. And I have to say, like, I have to admit, those Maiden shows that I saw with the uh, Dark Hall, I think was the name of the, 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 uh, the, the mixer for years, these were very beautiful shows. And it was like stuff was quiet and stuff got loud and stuff got quiet again. The and for me, range. it was very enjoyable. Yeah. But if you're headlining a modern metal festival nowadays, I think that the 18 to 25 or whatever year old kids around there, or the audience expects the same kind of volume which it gets all the day before. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, if you use if you put you know, them side by side yeah. with the old sound, yeah, yeah, definitely, it's yeah. like. Uh, and so I don't, I really, I think it's pretty much out there online. Why or like in forums because Maiden is such a big band and it's not can't only be me yeah. who recognizes this yeah. shift, um, and I think that people really got mad about it. And, and to, be, to be honest, when I was standing there, and the thing is, I turned around and I saw the manufacturer of the mixing console, which I tend to look at, of course. Yes. And I thought, oh. Really, does, does Mr. Doug Hall now use this kind of board? Interesting. And then I turned around again and I saw a very, very well known uh, front of house guy. Um, he's, he's, he's Ken Pooch from Root. He does uh, Justin Beaver and, and, and big, big artist, uh, Dr. Dre, I think, and like really big stuff. And he now does Maiden. And he's very open about it, which I kind of love because you can. He's on, on YouTube and explains all his, his console setup and everything, for which he does for Maiden. But he tends to mix in a very modern way, which is like. It has to be up there kind of all the time and you have to hear it kind of all the time and that's what people expect and if you are like wary of the stage in the third kind of delay line at the live venue you want to have it here mm -hmm. you want to have the rock show and this he, he does this mm -hmm. and this is totally fine but the thing is i experienced those beautiful shows and those great musicianship and where you can really get so if he turns the knob on his guitar mm -hmm. and starts to play with his fingers then you kind of really get it and now it's like <laughs> All right, so, you, you are spoiled. You know yes, how it was before. Exactly. So this and this is—it's not obviously not like what I just did. No, no, but no. To but to me, it feels like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're kind of taking away the experience and the whole musicianship thing of the musicians by just limit. As I always do, like this, because this is how this is how loud you can get, and <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. Even if you just uh, like uh, take yeah. any modern song, record and mix like these yeah. days. And you just look at the wave uh, of the wave. Yeah. It's just like flat block. Yeah, in German, I tend to call it Knackwurst Master, yeah. which is like sausage. Master. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like one block. And if you take like some uh, any recording from the before '90s, I guess, or something yes. like this, yes, it's just uh, like uh, like like there's a range. There's yes, a dynamic, exactly. dynamic range. A dynamic so range, so it yeah. bothers you. I was like, I had it in my notes. You know, like loudness. You know, I like do like loudness because it's competitive and because you have to be there and be loud. But this is just. The thing that what I love about bands is kind of taken away from me yeah. by this. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. For me, for me, what yeah. I hated about loudness is because when I was putting like uh, music after my interviews, I was always putting the song of yeah. the artist, right? Yeah. If and it's uh, and I record in high quality, yes. right? And if you put it in, and then you put in like the song in the end, it's just like boom. Yeah. And I have to pull all the like music really, down. Really, really, really down. Really yeah. down. So that's yes. on the same loudness level. Yeah. For, and it's just like, yeah. 
I, yeah, I, but this is what streaming services do anyway. So if you master a song for streaming too loudly, yes, then, then it just they cut it down. Then yes. you, you recognize it in playlists. Yes, yes, so it's like yes. way way less quiet. And what I do is if I uh, master stuff, I always provide different files for yeah, the mediums. For streaming for different stream services no, like or streaming CD is the vinyl. loudest yeah and promotional mp3 is also very loud then oh. for online and YouTube it's the same like the video audio file is what I do is the same like the streaming one mm -hmm. which is in a very high quality obviously because yeah. you can do it CD has to be 44 1 and 16 yeah because that's what CDs are yeah um, video is 24 48 uh, 40 24 which is kind yes. of the new standard because everybody does a video so you only work in this yes most of the time um, and then I do uh, so we got the, the mp3 which is loud we got the CD which is loud and we got the streaming video stuff which is not that loud but still yeah. competitive in this mm -hmm. term and I, I always provide vinyls vinyl mastering I heard that if you go too loud on vinyl the grooves can go into each other yeah but this is not really on my hand when mastering it for vinyl because the if it gets cut on the father thing which now gets the mother and it gets pressed again but it has to be cut at first into this vinyl um, sheet or the, like the blank vinyl record it, it has to be cut in there and the, the person who cuts it or does, who operates this process mm -hmm. he, this person decides how loud it's gonna be uh -huh. because because uh, yeah uh, like exactly you, how much can you, 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 you see yeah. how it goes yeah and yeah. the grooves grooves yeah, grooves, which, are, yeah. Grooves, uh, which are there like you can only put a certain time amount mm -hmm. on a while because the grooves uh, tend to get thinner and you have less sound quality so if they're broad then you get better sound quality yeah, you, you basically it yeah. pushes down yeah right? and also because the waveforms and this is the other big part because the waveforms are like one left and one right side mm -hmm. and the needles in the middle if you have too much low-end information like bass frequencies on one side like only on the left or on the right then it kind of throws out your needle all right. So this is one big thing that you take care of when mastering for vinyl is that you have your 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 bass frequencies or a big part of your bass frequencies have to be mono. Uh huh. So it's on both channels, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so like in electronic music, or everything happens. Um, then it's quite common to have some synthesizer stuff going on, and if oh. it's only very, rare, it has to be a big amount. But if like only low end frequency information on one side of yeah. your stereo image then it just uh, won't work with the needle so this is like the technical part of things and vinyl tends to have uh, which has more to do with the needle itself but there's some upper mid-range top end thing which can sound harsh from vinyl which does not sound harsh from digital it's because of the ah yeah needle because yeah. Uh, because vinyl is already when you just play it's silence it's already at this hiss is it this it, thing no not really but but the, the frequency the needle vibrates it, it tends to be uh, ah. to be honest I only know how to take the care frequency of frequency of the needle no or? I don't think so but the okay. thing is <laughs> that I know vinyl records that just sound harsh and and this is the stuff that I take care of because if I listen to the CD yeah. or I listen to the to the to the online release uh, stream thing <laughs> then it the, this upper mid-range thing sounds way more pleasant and the the particular vinyl records yeah. it doesn't sound good so I think okay this is stuff I have to take care about and, and think about it. and if you read about it in forums and everything it's also the thing that you have to address is like to take care and have a limiter but not on the whole frequency spectrum but more on the high end and top end so things don't tend to sound harsh ah. because high end is uh, vinyl is also limited in the upper mm -hmm. range they have don't that this needle can't not produce these higher frequencies that we can actually perceive mm -hmm. and and so I mean it is in our hearing range but it can't make this uh, whole um, overtone thing which is still happening and we kind of still perceive but yeah that's a whole different thing um, but and and this is the thing why, why in my opinion vinyl sounds warm and warm is such a stupid term in this kind of thing you mean but analog just <laughs> get <laughs> less top end yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah these adjectives in music production are very mm -hmm. very broad like and also if a musician says okay I want it more bloomy all right. <laughs> Let me do. Yeah, uh, like the bloom knob. 
Uh, do, do you know, uh, you're the bass guy, right? Yes. So you know, what's the guy name? Skla? Skla? Liska? Yeah. Leland Skla, I think. Leland the, the Skla. Phil, Phil Collins guy. Yeah, yeah, with the Leland. producer switch. With the producer yes, switch. Of yes, of course. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like, let me change it. Switch. It's a switch yeah. that doesn't do anything, but for the producer, yeah. like, yeah, 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 it's a thing, right? And you do yeah. this, it's like, let me do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I learned actually from, I uh, was at a seminar with uh, Sylvia Messi. Mm, yeah, yeah. And she had an, an A&R kind of awesome switch and at the back of the studio at the couch like three like yeah, yeah. turning knobs or one one like really switch and when the a and r people went in they said ah oh, the bass is kind of yeah it's right at your just 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 uh, le- yeah. all right <laughs> <laughs> she was like okay put this control back there because it's such a common request from yeah have you ever done that no. trick no no don't no. have to no what i what i did sometimes when i was uh, mixing monitors for bands like okay. when you're at the side of stage, like when they, if they go like pointed yeah. stuff and uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, the monitor person yes, who has yeah. to adjust, like the, who mixes for the musicians. And so many times stuff, just like if, if something is too loud and they just move away from the sound source on stage, yes, it gets true. quieter because yeah. the person, and, and those people are in a rush and they're like energized and playing Adrenaline, stuff. Yeah. And al- also a part of insecurities there because they have to hear themselves to properly perform and everything. But th- it always helps as a monitor uh, um, engineer to be a musician yourself and to kind of have played a show in your life and, and know, okay, what may people want to hear. So everybody needs the vocalist mm-hmm. and everybody needs some, some rhythm information. So you kind of put it everywhere. But sometimes people request stuff that either way, you know, kind of, okay, it would make sense or whatever. It's really loud out there. And right now, with all this iPad situation, you can go out there and say, oh, you can hear yourself. I can hear. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. can go there. But like if, if it comes in those very small changes mm-hmm. and you just say, hey, could you? And then you just, mm-hmm. better? So, yeah, awesome. And yeah. you haven't done a thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. this I learned from a very experienced monitor guy. Oh, all right. All that's, right yeah. that sometimes it's. Yeah, because just you to be there and to like put out some confidence to your musicians and yeah, yeah. But for that, out. you need to be conf- uh, yeah. you, you need to know if yeah. you're hurting them yeah. or not. Yes, you know? exactly. Yes, and even though even if you change something like this goes in like 0.5 dB increments, if you change it, yeah. and, and people then tend to, yeah, it's awesome now, and you think you can't an, hear you, it. You, you, no way. So they just get, get a kind of a confirmation that. If they request something, the person is there, or whatever. Like, like to have a more confident feeling on stage by a good monitor person and a very trustworthy one. It's basically it's like you yeah. have your friend in the back. It's like yeah. friends, I see you. Friends, tell me that you see me. Like yeah. you hear me. We yeah, hear each other. Yeah, some kind of this situation. Also, like, but like, like, of course things can get off. But if like, like a great monitor situation is like if if people not that experienced like change their instrument and have a total different volume level. Or if a keyboard is in a band and it plays this one sound in this song and like an organ sound in the other song, then they can be way off. And especially because of different frequencies that you hear differently in your position. And this is something you always have to take care of and just mm-hmm. listen to it by yourself. And, okay, ooh. Yeah, and, 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 and just make it easier for the band. And from my, I do still mix live bands. And a very important thing is uh, having a good sound on stage is always very important because musicians have to be able to perform well and then your sound outside ah, is way okay. better because okay. they perform good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I heard but this is a different topic now. Yeah. Well, well, well yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that mm-hmm. I can, but before, so uh, let's, let's stay on this one, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, sound on stage, right? I just interviewed uh, the band Broom, uh, and they said they they said sound check is a waste waste of time for them, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, because when they do sound check, it sounds one thing without people, but exactly. when the people come in, it changes the whole thing, and you have to readjust anyway. So they like we don't do sound checks yes. anymore; we just adjust during the yeah. you're during the thing. Yeah. And for me, it was like first time. I was like, wow, you actually. Yeah. Some, there are some yeah. people who don't do sound yeah. checks, you know. I didn't even think. Yeah, this, this is totally. There are some venues where I also, as a front of house guy, I just look at it. Okay, I got this channel. This is working. Okay, we can uh, kind of leave it for now because it t- changes totally yeah. if people come in. Uh, uh, but uh, as yeah. stages get bigger, yeah. this tends to disappear because as soon as you're open air, 
Yes, it doesn't affect it doesn't that much. Doesn't affect right? it any, and, I and never that thought much. about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. if you like playing this, this 300, 500, 100 clubs things, yeah. totally changes. Especially symbols. Oh uh, yeah. All over the place, people in there, kind of fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what I like in arena. Yeah. It's like a, in a, in a big hall and yeah. small hall. Yeah, you can see so much. There's so much difference. I was at the concert of the band Off, mm -hmm. and it, it was so horrible because something. Ch and I was there during the rehearsal because I was like, like okay, uh, you you witness sound check and show sound check and yeah. it just sounds cool. No, okay, yeah. fine, right? Yeah. A little bit. They play yeah. a little bit. Uh, I think I remember it correctly. Yeah. But what yeah. I remember for sure is that we're standing there with, with the guy, right? And uh, I need to have my ear earplugs always because I have damaged ears a little. Yeah, bit. I right. also have my my right specially but, made but, but stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. But when I take them yeah. out, I always check if the sound yeah. is good, what yeah. I'm missing or not. Usually, mm -hmm. I just need to um, be aware of high ends, you know, for me. Yes. And then I take them out, and it's just like 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 uh, like like forks and plates, and like like cutting my ears like a pieces, you know, like like I am like, all right, I have really damaged ears. I get it, right? I put it back, yeah. and then I turn around. So how's the sound for you? You know, yes. and he's like, like damaged forks. I was like, really? And then I look around. People don't like it. So something happened, and the sound was really bad, and I don't know why. But but during the you Happens. never know, never know, never know. And so uh, we walked out because we walked out, mm. and other people also walked out. Yeah, but I've never experienced like s such fail in a way, right? But they're the punk band, you know. But yes. energy yeah. was there. Yes. But wow, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, it's 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 hard. But as I said, like I never experienced that some people don't even do sound checks, you know? Like, like uh, yeah. I mean, it obviously happens if you're on tour and you just come in late. <laughs> well, yeah. Or if you just, uh, if you're not, there is always like one sound check and if the lineup is the same and it has to be fast, then it's just line check after this. Like you yeah. put, okay, I kind of, because in this kind of rock configuration, people have to kind of hear the same. It's like the center position is always vocals. Yes. If they are trio, then it kind of is like this outer position things, but your singer needs the vocals, everybody needs the vocals and everything else has to be turned down. And cymbals are always like the thing in the smaller locations that tend to... What's the best place in the concert hall to, to be as a music uh, audience member? Now, I, I try to stand at the front of the house. No, yeah, that's what I think. It's, like it's the it's, best sound. But right? in some venues you obviously can't do this, especially in clubs, because the front of the house is like the back of the house yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So these are the headphone shops. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I tend to stand like in the like like at home, like well, the, the, the basic triangle. Wait a second, you mentioned headphone jobs. What 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 uh, what does that doesn't mean? What does yeah, that if mean? you're as a sound engineer and if you just moved into the corner because we sold so much tickets, there is no room okay, for this no, concert. There's right no here. point for you to hear the. Yeah. No, no, you can't hear it. Yeah, because you can't you are hear in the corner. properly. Properly. Yeah. And what also happens, what you have to get used to very fast is most of if if you're elevated. On any because you have to see above your audience, you are on those stage podests most of the time. If it's built up or, or even in some clubs, you're always standing on some kind of platform, and this platform tends to be of wood, made of wood, mm -hmm. so it vibrates. Mm -hmm. And when you go down, it's concrete or tiles or anything, or it does not vibrate. So you get way more bass than everybody else. <laughs> Ooh, this is something. And you always have to go down there and check is 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 it are my feet also kinda of getting it? Is it just me on the bouncy platform? Okay. Like, oh this is awesome and everybody's like, Oh there's no bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, obviously as I tend to if I mix the show live and I do the monitor for the band. There's like the first very important moment is after the first song because this is when you get the the, the most important monitor stuff mm. because this is the first time they like just like you said they have sound check and they have a concert mm -hmm. later on and it changes for them because audience is in and sound changes so they go on stage and they start playing mm -hmm. and you open up the monitor stuff just like you you manage it all and put it in sound check. Mm -hmm. and then stuff changes and, and after the first song is always the part of, hey I need my guitar more hey yeah. I need this so this yeah. is the part where I can't leave the console like after the first song I gotta look in the front and be there yeah. and, and adjust things as fast as possible because there's the second song and people are waiting yeah. so yeah and as soon as I know okay they are confident 
they can play it and everything, then I start going around with and the, walk with around. The, with the, with the iPad? No, just because ah. this is for me actually very, very happened to me once that I just bumped into somebody and whoosh, <laughs> but it was a channel that was muted. Yeah. But I just, I, I, you, 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 I was, you I look was... on your iPad or whatever device and you go around and uh, uh -huh, and you just leave your finger there or whatever and you just bump or somebody bumps into you yeah. or or you get drunk people around. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it happens. And this is why I just leave the, everything back there. I just listen yeah. and go there. Because I was always like, because yeah. when they started to appear, I mean, yeah. I don't know when. No, it's when, great. When, for sound checks and everything, it's, it's when awesome. When iPads yeah. appeared, I guess, yeah. the, the, the yeah. software. But for me, it was always like, like, it's like, I mean, it's so delicate in a way that yeah. you can like, uh, yes. as you said, bump into it. Yeah, somebody, and, and there's, like no, lock. DBs, there's no locks. Yeah. There's no locks. No, no. I no. see there is a potential of creating and a soft, uh, of a hardware yes. thing, right? And <laughs> lock your Wi-Fi passwords, oh. uh, your Wi-Fi systems. And so it's like, if, I, <laughs> if you go to a venue and have like, front of the house and it's open, <laughs> yes. okay, maybe I got your app. No, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you could do it. But So yeah. you do it, uh, you do it, you walk around, right? I walk around and just listen and, and I also Look at people's faces. Are they That's enjoying true, it? True. This is why I, I get usually, paid. <laughs> when I go to I, I, when I go to the concert, I usually stand front of house and I look at the faces of the guy yes. <laughs> who's mixing. Because for me, I can like because so, is he still doing? <laughs> yeah, what, 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 yeah. What's going on? Yeah. You know, like the, 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 yeah, but I tend to do all the time. I'm mixing yeah. the whole, whole show all the time because I really enjoy being with bands that I know and where I know the songs. And and studio mixing is also a big part. Is automation like to move things around and now the guitar solo goes up and now he's singing and whatever and I tend to, if I know the songs I do this live and I have my delay ma, 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 and I know when they are open and when they're closed and I kind of mix all the time mm -hmm. and I, this is always like if you go to a show and there's the engineer um, is like standing at the console looking at okay he's got to or she has got to mix six bands tonight and so yeah. there is not the same attention for me if I just in I'm in there for 40 minutes and just give my best in those 40 minutes. There's a big difference to have your own sound person with you than to have the, the, the house person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can be a big difference. Yeah, yeah. That's why I recently saw that uh, there's an option uh, to like at the concerts that the band sells merch, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the options is that you can buy a USB stick with the live... With the live show. With the live yeah. show. Happens at bigger venues mostly because yeah, this has to be separately mixed. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But, but I never yeah. knew about this, but now after talking to... I mean, mm. I knew that there's mm. an option, but when you like say it like that, right? That there's you're there. Mm. So this is unique experience right yes yeah. exactly and if the budget is there then there is always a person on a separate system behind the stage in a proper room kind of treated room to mix it live and what also happens what bigger productions as soon as you're playing festivals which have live, live tv or film or have any kind of broadcast or recording situation as, as a video part then you productions what i mean is like bands traveling with their own equipment and a console and everything um, you have a broadcast mix mm -hmm, mm -hmm. made in your console which works with the same signals and th which is kind of which which has certain changes and it's also the master is more compressed and yeah, everything to yeah. just okay we have our truck out there we're going live on our streaming network anything just okay these two outputs are my broadcast mix take mm -hmm. them from here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this is a level that you can like on a different send level in your console structure you can establish a, a, a broadcast mix mm -hmm, live mm -hmm. because if you only especially in a smaller club mm -hmm. if you end up with the sum of the pa you get bass drum and vocals because guitars are loud in the room and don't have to be featured that much on the system and bass too but it's like snare drum is also like in those smaller clubs that's like a very loud thing but the bass drum which in the aesthetic of the music has to be very loud in compared to how it actually is when you listen to it acoustically and the singer obviously has to be very much um, increased and so if you have like this 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 uh, two track from a from a smaller show then you end up with uh, bass drum vocals and large amounts of reverb because they have to be very loud to be perceived via the system so yeah it's always better to have like this second kind of mix you uh, mentioned uh, like monitors right mm -hmm. How many uh, bands from from the new bands whatever use monitors? 
Because what I what I mean is like there's in ears. Mm. To be honest, I'm not um, for this kind of thing. I, I'm way more into studio still, but I travel with with one band who have, have their own in ear system, so mm -hmm. I don't have to do any monitor work. They they take so what's the care of all, like, You know, I, w I would never like. Ah, okay, so. I understood. Okay. okay, so the monitors it's like for the musicians to hear themselves because usually when you're on stage, yeah. the sound goes to into yeah. the public and you don't hear. What you're playing, basically, right? Yeah, you have to have monitors to hear yourself, and nowadays yeah. there's this in-ear thing with your. So the in-ear thing about. is a mix of what's uh, what's on the stage, right? Yeah. So you can hear stuff. But there has to be a mix put together for your ears, and everybody right. kind of needs a different thing because. And you don't need monitors. And you don't need monitors when you have. A, I mean, you can have it as a backup if you I have I like a to budget. have a monitor because if I play low frequencies on my bass, I kind of don't hear it. <laughs> yes, the, there's no. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's no feedback yes. of emotion. And also no. singers are used to the vibration of their body mm -hmm. and also intonate with their bodies. Like if, if you play guitar or some string instrument or something which is close to your body, you feel the instrument. And if yeah. you play, sing the same note as you play, which mostly happens, Resonation. then you kind of get this feeling. So this vibration thing is very important. And you don't get this from the inner feeling. So many, many singers or many, many stages, there is, there's both because people still want the pressure and, and the stuff moving from monitors and have the precision and everything from the Indians and also like the isolation from the Indians. Because if you go to a bigger kind of show, um, there's always some small microphones in front of the, like on stage pointing at the audience. Mm -hmm. So to hear the audience. Because right. otherwise they think they're playing in like a isolated room. They have to have a certain amount of live feeling still on stage. So they get the audience mixed into the ears. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's, that's the, the live thing. So I, I enjoy doing live all the time because it makes me faster for the studio and all this decision making is better. And uh, uh, I have to be sharp now. I have to make decisions now. And this is the creative flow of mixing is always the, the making decisions in the moment mm -hmm. and, and putting together a sound which, which, which works. And this is the, the part where I where you just flow, where you just like, no matter what, what you do, you get in this kind of state of, of your mind and you just do. And th that's the most important thing. And, and I tend to get kind of bored doing only this and I get very bored doing only live. So I always combined it. <laughs> but you <laughs> mentioned like very bored when you're doing live. Yes. No, live, I, I never wanted to be like a house person. Uh -huh, so to house. be there and, and, and do every band every night mm. and, and work with the same equipment every night. So this I got many offers mm. because people are looking for it a lot. But I, I never, never did it. And I only do bands that, that I know and that I also know and, and like on a very personal level. This is also important to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to, to work with this, also in the studio. And because you just have to vibe with the people which kind of trust their baby to you, like yeah. their, their creative output to you, and they want to have it represented right. And, and I, I love it in, in live situations and do love it a bit more in the studio, of course, yeah. Because mm -hmm. this is the, the, way I, the thing I do way more. So, yeah. yeah. But life is interesting. It's a, yeah, so I understand it's completely different beast in, in not such a way. Yes, really. because I, I don't have feedbacks in here. I can move around equalizers how I please and life is whoop, oh, okay, too much. <laughs> <laughs> the creative process. So the, yeah. You mentioned technology, right? Yes. So like uh, before like uh, shooting the the before the recording uh, i said that uh, v video guys they have problem that they need to invest in constant technology because there is a turnaround yeah. what's cool what's not cool as i understand in the uh, uh, music world it's a little bit different i mean there are probably some regarding uh, i don't know what what, what what actually what what's like a gets higher turnaround if you want to work with clients or something like this it's like do do people like say do you have like for example tape machine right yeah you like tape machine right right uh, it's like uh how much do you don't get a gig if you want to gig uh, like uh, like recording like mixing stuff if you don't or do have a tape machine for mm. example right so like this this tape machine in particular which i use only for one specific thing and mm -hmm. I don't record bands on it so mm -hmm. this is a master machine and it's like a quarter inch uh, two track 
so what, the benefit of this machine to me is that I can do some stuff which I, which I still can't do in the digital domain. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, as the years go by, I tend to go way more and more and more just digital, which has many benefits and also in the work and, and the time and everything with, with bands, is it's, digital is just a blessing, to be honest, because it's just so easy. In the old days, you had your mixing console and there was your mix opened and then the song was done and everything got reset. It mm -hmm. was done. And even if you just put it back, there were so many recall systems and digital recall systems where just... So the light on the screen is red and then turn the knob and it goes green. Mm -hmm. And the next and the next you get like thousands of knobs. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> and then it still won't ever sound exactly the same as and now I open up the session, it's it's there. Mm -hmm. And so this this helps a lot. But the thing is I kinda never don't get a kick because I don't work that much analog, but it's always a benefit for bands mm -hmm. which want this kind of aesthetic. Then it's cool. And also for different studios or mixing engineers, which then book me just for mastering because I can do the tape mastering. Or I can also just provide the tape transfer for them to then mm -hmm. work on and do the session on themselves or whatever, just to improve their mix or to have this certain kind of flavor, color, whatever. Mm -hmm. Degradation, to be honest, mm -hmm. because it, 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 it degrades, it, it decreases in, in, in a very pleasant way to our. Uh, mm -hmm our like like we 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 feel it or we mm -hmm. hear it or we tend to listen it's more pleasing to the ear you want to mm -hmm. put it like this yeah and soothing whatever and so the question was how we, how equipment is important yeah and my personal opinion is less and less and less uh very good mm -hmm. if you're starting out for example a, a, a just a, a proper kind of laptop let's let's have a laptop or computer in it. and it doesn't even matter which manufacturer it is or how fast it is because you're a video guy and audio is like a, a small fragment of data and also the processing power can be way less um with if you're just working with with basic stuff if you get a daw program like a digital audio workstation no matter which one um the one you know the best is the best and this, the stock plugins, or like, like the, the whole plugins is like the small software increments you put in yeah. there and whatever, um, like which is come with this program are for every band to do demos or showcase stuff in any, it, it's plenty if you know your way around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that I have to go further than that doing it professionally because I sometimes like people work with other stuff and I have to have the same stuff mm -hmm. if I take sessions from them. But to just do basic recording and, and basic uh, mixing and everything and learning it, um, you can start with your laptop, with the software and with some kind of reproductive system mm -hmm. where you listen to it because mm -hmm. you have to judge it. Mm -hmm. And speakers are great, but it's always 50% <laughs> speakers, 50% room. That's mm -hmm, always mm -hmm, the thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can just get speakers that work in your room, which are terrible in another room. And I obviously came from a very large room into now a rather small room with the same kind of speakers, which are pretty small in here. But I found a way to make them work in mm here. -hmm. It was not a short way and also not an easy way, but I found a way. <laughs> and now it's all measured in. And, and um, of course, I'm in, like in my third month now. Mm -hmm. So it's still kind of learning stuff in here. But I exactly know where to look at mm -hmm. and bass is always a big big thing but there are headphones out there which are great there is like uh, now there are more and more coming like virtual headphone systems what's that for example like i think now senna and neumann are doing a system sonarworks i think is doing the, the whole flattening thing for the headworks and and slate digital is uh, providing the vsx system which are headphones if you put them on they um, sound virtualized. Like they sound like a room. They sound okay. like you're in a room. Because the thing is, the headphone perception is so different because you got like one speaker attached to one we'll, ear we'll to, and you yeah. don't have any of this uh, cross uh, thing going on. Yeah, which because is, the, it comes to left yeah. right with a slight delay. Yeah, because it, sound waves tend to take your time from one ear and they also the room get hitting and your head and everything yeah, yeah. And, and the headphones take, it, take all of this away. All right, yeah. And so 
there is software again and I used to when I had to work with headphones I kind of had a software that put like 75% of the left side also inside the right speaker right. to so have this kind of cross, kinda, kinda. cross talk exactly this is all not really important because you just have to get used to it and you have just have to be able to judge it mm -hmm. that's all there is and there's like a certain level that you have to have because you have to have all the frequencies kind of represented but if it's your room and your speaker and you're working there since 10 years then it's fine when you know your system or it's always very important to check in your car or if you're a live guy if your band goes off and nobody's in the room you just listen to your mix this is just what you do to kind of judge it somewhere else yeah and that's like learning every time and this okay some kind of interface some kind of software and some kind of reproductive system yeah what in whatever stuff you buy but you you that's in the early days you had to have your mixing console and all of the stuff to make it happen and that's really not the, the case anymore so it still comes down to what you actually can do with it mm -hmm. which is still the most important part yeah, it's it's like uh, if you're shit, it's no, it yeah. will come out also not and really good. You just interpret uh, things for artists. It's mm -hmm. just like how you feel it. That's how you put it. And if the people you work for like it that way, then it's a good fit. Yeah, because with yeah. video, for example, if uh, if you work corporate, right? If you, for example, mm. you shoot interviews, right? Mm. Uh, for a corporate client, right? Mm. They want some kind of uh, deliverable, which is like a video of certain codec of certain resolution. And they say, and we work only with guys who have this camera. Mm. And that's where it comes from, you mm -hmm. know, like, the, and some guys can't, because cameras are expensive mm. and, and you need to constantly reinvest all everything that you have to buy a new camera, so the old mm. one, but you don't get gigs if you don't have the camera. That's the thing, right? Yeah, but you can rent. Y yes, you can rent. Yeah. Yes, you can rent. Yes, but it, it depends on on on. on yeah, but it's a, it's kind of a different budget. So if, most of the bands that I now meet or work with, they have very good equipped rehearsal spaces for this kind of stuff. Mm. There's always kind of one person in in the band who takes care of this stuff, who kind of enjoys this demo recording and getting into it, just as a hobby. Mm. And so when when I start to work with this band, I can have like a consulting thing I think I mentioned it before and just get to know their equipment and say okay this would be best to place it there and to put it here and have this remote production thing going and these are not that big budgets that have. and there's also a way to just rent if you have like drum recordings on your own rent go to any studio which is close to you and ask hey can I rent your microphones like your for overheads or whatever mm -hmm. and just just get it get it done to be honest and and the creative part and the music writing part to me is way more important than this part and also this part <laughs> to yeah. be honest because so many good songs that we adore since we are smaller that our parents adored there's really not good sound quality because uh, like for me it's always like this the first the doggy dog record the all moral mm. kings record this record really doesn't sound great to me. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of thin and kind of rehearsal space and, and kind of like this whole starting of digital recording thing and, and okay. But it sounds great because they play so great and they have such great songs and, and earworms <laughs> like for generations. Mm -hmm. And still now I saw two or three doggy dog shows now and I, and I love it. And it's awesome and the CD really doesn't sound good. It just if you from a technical standpoint it doesn't sound good and there's this um, this very famous YouTube guy Rick Piatto. Yes, Rick Piatto. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. You know you know Rick Piatto because I ask all musicians, famous or not, yeah, come on. about Rick Piatto. No. Some people know, some people don't. Really? You know? No, yeah. but I, like for me, like a very very good statement was that the okay the best sounding records of all the ten best. So I had some video on, and then in the beginning he said, you know, if people say that's the best sound what they actually mean is the best it's, it's the timing yeah it's just good performance yeah. and then it sounds great because it's performed well and that's it and that's what what makes like bands with big budgets like queen or something that's really sounds great because they had the budgets and all but from so many bands which just the first records is all are awesome they didn't have the budget at the first record later on they did but the first record is the best because they had the they had the longest time and period of of, of working on those songs because later on the label came and said okay next year we need a next we need a new album 
and they didn't have that much time again yeah. or whatever. They had to work with a producer that the label decided for them and they didn't want to feel comfortable or whatever. And so there's so many things in there, but the, the song is the most important thing and the performance. And, and I always tend to, in the studio to work, to have a very good surrounding and space for musicians to feel good and well and comfortable and to be able to perform, no matter if it's on stage or in studio, also have to hear yourself properly to perform. And this is where it's the same for me as or for what my job is, just to, to have a very good atmosphere going and then be nice to people and everything, and yeah, and get them perform. Yeah. What's the what's the modern record that you heard maybe recently that you like really enjoyed, like the production or something that, uh, or maybe like something that you had to listen on. Okay, I need to check out on the vinyl how it sounds also because it's so amazing. Yeah, but what I always check on on vinyl is obviously stuff that I master for vinyl because with with each production I, I learn because I transform mixes of different frequencies into a master and then do the vinyl mastering and then it's out and. And you have to obviously, learn. I've never heard it. I get the test pressing, yeah. but there is like never any chance to. Okay, I think the master is still wrong, and the precedent never happened. Mm -hmm. It's more like so. Okay, if the bands and everybody digs it, then it's out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I most of the time I just get the, the final product, and that's the first thing I do is just to 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 double check it with my yeah. master. And then at home I got my my record, my, my vinyl player attached to the same sound system. I have my, my computer on and so I listen to the digital master and listen to the vinyl yeah. and just compare all the time mm -hmm. to, okay, this is what happened. That's pretty good, okay. So this is what, what what I most critical listen to vinyl. All the other vinyl stuff I listen to is just for pleasure. It's just for Yeah, yeah, but for pleasure. Like, yeah. for example, like, is there like a band recently that you like really enjoy n the one that you just throw like uh, other bands like not mm. the one that you worked with to be honest it's 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 it's, it's so much I listen all the time and i add about three songs every day to my playlist because it's so fast but no but if you don't remember that nothing like struck you like like oh my god this is like yeah obviously this is like so the peter gabriel released his last album the newest one with two different mixers so he had the same album mixed by a guy who is known for mixing kind of energetic and pop and high end yeah. kind of guy. And another guy who's very no, well known for distorting things and putting it like lower yeah. and more beef and stuff in it. And he just released the album in two versions, like a bright one and a dark one, I don't know how it's called. But I listened, because I know those, not personally, but, but you know those, the, the, works, the yeah, people the who mixed it, you know both are very well known. And I listened to the stuff that, uh, that the guy mixed that I like more on a personal level. And it really kind of struck me because it's it's all in the arrangement of, of Peter Gabriel and all in this where does he play sounds and how does he like mixing is not only frequencies it's always it's also left right it's depth and it's height and where do you place things and also and this album is is interesting because you can compare mixes which are on on the the highest level out there because there's a budget for it so this is a very cool experience to have or to listen to. And and yeah, Peter Gabriel is always was always a sound reference production. It, like, the So album is still going on there, and, and still like Don't Give Up is an awesome song to listen to, and obviously Sledgehammer, and then was these are still references which you just you can't. So I can't listen to it without being like struck down with the with the like how this is done, man. This sounds so great. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. But but the other records that I mostly listen to, they the song gets me. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's just like a normal. Yeah, uh, you like like a. I like, like the a, new like Truth Priest record. <laughs> 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 like there's the Truth Priest badge on it. You put it in there. It's Truth Priest. Yeah, Thanks. Right. Like, like you expect, you get what you expect. And ACDC is the same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so this this is also important to to keep your brand up and 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 yeah. What's the and most important thing uh, for, like, in all this thing, right, in music? Uh, like, if you want to make music, what's, what do you think is the most important thing? Yeah, to, to have a good idea for a song, I guess, because you need, you need a piece of music if it's, like, a song or if you're doing more, like, free jazz. So you need, like, your, your basic emotion to, to craft anything or if you do a painting or whatever, if you want to get creative and 
songwriting is a purely creative task then you have to have some kind of or emotion or feeling or, or thing that you want to talk about that you want to make people aware of or anything or you want to so that's that's like the most important thing and actually you have to live in a country where you are able to do it where mm -hmm. it's where music is not forbidden mm -hmm. and this unfortunately this 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 countries exist which is like very sad to me um that's a, a big you have to be in in a position that you're able to that it helps if you play an instrument or like you that's that's the the, the basic stuff but but like if you're already in the position of being a musician you need an idea you need some kind of riff or whatever to uh, that gets you going and uh, that you don't kind of look back for a longer time and just craft and craft and do and be in the process and finish the process mm -hmm. songwriting and everything is about finishing it because you only learn for the next one if you finish it <laughs> get get things done Get yeah. your stuff together and finish Get it. Get your yeah. done, which yeah. is beeped now, but which, which was long time. Like I had one motivational card in my studio, like it was get stuff done. Get was, stuff yeah. done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, All right. Yeah. So what's your plan now? You're gonna continue mixing, mastering. Yes. Uh, are you any plans of your live shows, uh, like um, of, with your band? No, uh, no. At the moment, nothing. No. I, I can tell you now. I can give you any dates now. Okay. There is a fourth uh, single to come yet. Yeah. To be released, um, which I'm very looking forward to because I like the song and it's this very special song because it's the first song we ever wrote and the first rehearsal where the singer and the drummer met. Mm -hmm. and we always kept this song in the drawer because it was the first and then we were asked by uh, some microphone company with a big YouTuber to, to record a song there because they want to have recorded to have recorded live. So we performed this song and, and it turned out awesome and now this one gets released and maybe there will be a show somewhere then mm -hmm. but I can't tell you anything now. All right, so but the know. other thing is like my, my daily business is in here and I do... Like right now, I'm involved in I think six projects right now. Where I do just mastering or even the full production with with the endowing right now. I have um, I think next Monday there's a mixing session with an indie band from Berlin, which I do via stream. I do a lot via stream. This is also a reason for the smaller room now, because there's maybe one one important thing of how I work now, and is that I don't send surprise packages anymore, <laughs> which means that if bands send me tracks, I don't mix and send it back. I have a live session with them. Ah, oh, all right. And I do this via a streaming setup, which I have in here. And the thing is, they then, like, like if you watch a game or whatever, they see my door and everything, they see me, they talk to me directly, and I send out a high quality stream. So as soon as they have internet, they can listen to stuff. And this takes a few important things out of the equation, which I didn't even think before, but which turned to do it. <laughs> uh, which, yeah. And the cool thing is that if they are remote, like this one band in Berlin, they are all sitting at home or sitting where they usually judge music. So if I do a mix here and I just send it over, this is the first thing where they judge it and where they like individually the musicians. And then they talk about it then they provide the feedback all together and then give it to me. And the thing is, if I do the streaming stuff session, everyone is at the position where he already judges things. And then the musicians go to, okay, I want the bass drum more like this. I want my guitar to sound like that or this. I actually thought like that because you can communicate so much, but if the session is going and you're just doing stuff, it's very hard to actually really hit the spot. And I always work with the musicians until uh, uh, like a, a general level of, of sound or whatever, a general bar is reached and everything there, like the smaller things are delay throws or, or automation stuff, I can do on my own, but this is the way for me to learn what the band wants. In an AI, I have to put it obviously in, in a certain quality of quality. I can't do like stuff that won't work or that like, okay, this, don't put my name on the record, okay? <laughs> whatever, yeah. no, I can't do this. But, um, but but to have this session is very important. With with even there are two bands from Vienna I work with, which could easily travel to the studio, but they don't want to do it anymore because they want to judge it there. And this is the other thing. If you go to the studio, which obviously happens to a lot of people who watch this, I guess because they're musicians, 
and you listen to it in the studio, which is a measured room with nice speakers and everything, it sounds kind of impressive, of course, and it sounds right. Mm -hmm. And like listening spots at home tend to not sound right, uh, but it sounds way off at home and yeah. like really not what I imagined or whatever, which nobody has a fault to it, but that's just how things are. So the studio is not wrong or anything because in here you liked it. You really mm -hmm. thought, okay, that's our sound. You get home to your 20 year old stereo and it's a, oh man, like this really. And the other thing that happens if they, in the band, <laughs> they judge it from different uh, positions or listening environments. And one goes, oh man, that bass is really boomy. And it's like next to it. <laughs> no, and, and all the other three say like, no, it's not. Okay. Then they kind of start to improve the sound systems mm, because right. they get from the people they trust like since years and mm -hmm. they tell, no, no, this is like only at your place. Mm -hmm, <laughs> they mm -hmm. also have a benefit then yeah. of improving that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's also it's like kind of the thing that happened and I got to learn by doing it and now I don't do any session without it, to be honest, because it, mm -hmm. it, it, it also spares so much time yes. from both sides. Yes, yes. Yes. And they just go home from work, they have dinner and then we meet up online. They get a Zoom invite from me. Yeah. They have, oh, they open up uh, a browser window. This is where the audio comes and I just mute my microphone so they can always talk to me yeah, yeah. and I just unmute my mic and talk to them. And this is always the same with every mixing session I do now. Yeah. Never, I never uh, thought about that. Yeah. I mean, you you always said like streaming and stuff, but yeah. I never, never like really because it's not like a thing that I would would be doing. I mean, it's the same thing in the video world. You can still, like for example, in yeah. Black Magic, you can stream. I think uh, you can show what you're doing, right? Yes, so same exactly. thing. So you can this, same, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing. Same yeah. thing. Same yeah. thing. Same thing. This is really cool. It's a modern age. This like the. Well, a, a good positive side of technology that it's exactly of... and 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 i never thought about this uh thing that they judge it at home yeah and and what actual benefit that brings to the whole whole game a whole whole process to be honest yeah and you get yeah. immediately three four uh, yeah. how it's called like like the the the, the testing on on, yeah. on on horrible yeah. uh devices you know like like, like how it sounds <laughs> yeah oh no oh no, yes. oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah on a laptop on a good system <laughs> on 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 some iPhone or uh, yes at the same time exactly you, you get it at the same because one guy is at the U-Bahn with with earbuds <laughs> yes <laughs> no yes, but yes. usually uh, we find a a, a a spot where where everybody has has time and, and can judge things and it also doesn't take that long because I obviously prepare the session in, in, at first and kind of make shape a sound like I think it fits so I, al I can already present something so I don't they, they don't have to watch me like label the tracks and anything so that's already done editing is obviously done should be done beforehand anyway and so it's like I open the session and, and it's all there and I say okay this is what I imagine so this is cool for you guys so no actually we want this and, and, and it's like very fast um, working and it's also like you, you see like pleasure in those people working with you because they Oh, this was so awesome. This was so fast. And, and yeah, okay. And it exactly sounds like this. And then when the session is done, I immediately send a, a file out of this session. And they so, that, 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 so they, they have, because it's so frustrating to, to leave the studio without anything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. you achieved it even when recording. Or you had this, this session today and it was so awesome. And now you can't show it to your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Uh, of course, this happens. This should not be released, obviously. But it yeah, happens. Yeah, but Look what we did today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th yeah, this this kind of changed it all, and also this this made this smaller room possible because I don't have to accommodate any more people. And if I have to, it's in the other studio. That's about it. So yeah, and that's the plan for the future to just keep doing what I'm doing and what I enjoy the most, to be honest. Yeah, uh, but for other terms, this is like a nine to five thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you're very welcome, and thank you for having me. Yeah. So follow Lucas on uh, social media. Yes, it, Instagram is like the biggest account. It's all they're all LW Sonics is <laughs> where you find <laughs> it, and also LWSonics.com is the homepage. Yeah. And if you want to get in touch on the homepage, there's this this uh, thing you can where you can put in your content and your request and everything, or miss. just DM on on Instagram is is fine, or email which is office at LWSonics.com. Everything is there in, in it's the all there. description. Yeah. And look down below, yeah. hit the Please, like. If you don't find me, <laughs> tell Arthur. Oh, and he can easy, tell yeah. me where where it didn't happen. So, <laughs> so where where the it's the, easy. The, it's the, a, I mean, the bad spot is. <laughs> look at this. Ah. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>